So uh, welcome to Discover Creative Careers at ARU. Uh, my name is Sarah Jones. One of the things that I do as part of my job is I support students to select the right courses and right futures for them. Um, and I'm really pleased to invite Robert, to have invited Robert Hurd to join us today. Thanks for coming, Robert. Um, Robert's going to talk to us a little bit about his career in acting to date. So um, Robert and I are going to have a chat, uh, discuss his career. If you have any questions, please do pop them in the chat as we're going. If there's anything that occurs to you, I can ask it as we go along or I can come to them at the end and I'll prompt you again to ask any questions. You can unmute your mic and put your camera on and say hi to Robert and ask any questions, but then you would be um, included in the recording. So if you want to just pop them in the chat, I can read them out to Robert as well. So Robert, thank you for joining us. Really excited to find out a bit more about your career and how you got to where you got to today. Um, so just to start, start with the early days. So were you into performing as a child? Um, well, as a child, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm the first, first of a, a large-ish family and I feel as though I've, <laughs> I've always had that um, <clears throat> creative streak in me, but it wasn't until uh, year six, I think five or six of, of primary school, where we had um, a play that we were doing at Christmas time. And this is kind of one of my first kind of favourite theatrical memories. Um, we were doing a com uh, comparison between Christmas in the UK and Christmas in Australia. Uh, and obviously, in Australia, it's warm and people go down to the beach and they have barbecues and, and that's Christmas for them. Um, so I was I was part of the the Australian team, and someone had found me um, a, a boxing kangaroo puppet uh, that I had will have, will have received um, as as an Australian, um, and my parents had a, a friend who had recently moved to Australia, and so I, I remember kind of getting really excited and, and ringing her up and going, oh um, can can I do my accent for you? Um, and and just kind of really kind of trying to be uh, as good and as solid on this accent and this performance of this tiny, I think yeah. our, our primary school only had like 90 pupils. But I was like, I'm going to do this really, really well. Uh, and so I feel as though that was that, that first spark and then kind of all of the feedback was like, oh, your accent was so good. And then I just kind of, I, it kind of just kept steamrolling from there, really. And, and any, any chance to, to try out an accent or to, to be creative, to have, to have fun, to communicate with people, I, I just took, uh, took every opportunity I could, really. Um, um, and, then, and then things moved on. I, I went to um, uh, a high school um, in, in North Norfolk. And <clears throat> from there, I, I had quite a, 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 a good a drama teacher who was very, very up on, on trying to, she, she, I think, I think she, she noticed something in me. She, she noticed kind of like a, a spark, some, something, something that was exciting. And so she kind That's of really interesting because every every person that I've spoken to have, have said the same thing that a particular teacher recognised something creative and really support and it's really interesting how instrumental that seems to be in people making a decision about their future. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like, and it, it you kind of you you hope you hope that that you as a child have that. Uh, yeah. And you think all about all of the, the potential kind of children that don't have that. And you're like, oh, no, kind of we, we could be missing. I mean, and exactly in whatever career it is, we, we could yeah. be missing those those geniuses or those those sparks just because they haven't had the right kind of nudge at the right time. Um, but so so she she really helped me kind of focus in a little bit. What, what was really interesting was that in. Um, uh, year year nine, when we were asked to choose what subjects we wanted to do for GCSE, I I was told that uh, I, I I had to choose between geography and drama. Oh uh, yeah, I remember that. 
Yeah, and I was I was absolutely distraught. I, I yeah. went I went to the my um, year nine head, and I, I I cried in his office because I was like I I just don't know what to do, because I loved I loved drama so much, but but I think also at the time in in secondary and, and sometimes um, sixth form education, you you are you are kind of like taught that perhaps. <clears throat> perhaps humanities more than creative um, subjects are perhaps more useful at times yeah. and, and so so I at that point there, a, a, a compromise was made uh, which was that drama or theatre studies as it was then um, didn't require you to have done drama GCSE so so I I stuck with geography right and then went on to do um, AS and A level in theatre studies. Okay, so you so you were kind of encouraged. You had this really limited choice, but you had a way of keeping the door open. Yeah, exactly. So so okay. so I, I if if there had been if it had been more rigid, if the rules had been more rigid about not being able to do theatre studies or drama. Um, in, in higher education is am I, am I getting the right phrasing right it's higher education no so, so you're, you're talking at sort of a, a level equivalent so we, higher education we'd say university but you're talking about you didn't need GCSE to progress to level three as we'd call it exactly exactly Brilliant. so so it was like I can I can do I can do the humanities which potentially could set me up uh, in, in a different way and and obviously in year nine how are you supposed to kind of know what it is that you want to do um, but I had I did have a desire to want to to perform but because I was still able to do uh, AS and A level without having done GCSE I was like okay this is this is still an opportunity for me further down the line to to really kind of go for it just out of interest, um, did you do geography A level or AS level? I did, I did, I did, and and so I'll get to this later. I okay. at Anglia Ruskin, I wanted to do dra a drama and geography combined honours, right. and I signed up, and I actually did that, but I think I'm not sure exactly sure how far it was before I started Anglia Ruskin. They said we we can't offer drama and geography as a uh, as, as a combined honours anymore, what what would you like to do? So I ended up doing uh, drama and film studies, which was another another okay. kind of my. Yeah. <coughs> to go back a step, um, Tanya's asked the question that I was actually thinking myself, which was like, did you do drama or theatre outside of school at all? Mm. So qu qu tons actually, um, but it was something that got far I, I got far busier with it at sixth form okay. so so I'd, I'd done uh, pantomimes I'd done musicals uh, as part of school activities and kind of extracurricular school activities but um, I I managed to get involved in uh, the Norfolk Youth Music Theatre okay and so that was like an amateur children's um <clears throat> uh theater group up, up in norwich and and that really kind of helped me kind of pr propel me and it, it was really really good quality as well it was with wonderful students all around the county of norfolk kind of like from the north north norfolk to south norfolk norfolk um and that that absolutely was a, a great big commitment and and wonderful to do like the first show that we did there was Fiddle on the Roof we ended up doing um Les Miserables and, and Sweeney Todd and that really that again really kind of cemented um a sense in me that that, that, that this was something that was um available an option to me um and also previous to that summer schools as well acting summer okay. schools Again, I was I was really fortunate that there were was a um, a repertory theatre in Sheringham, which is uh, so I went to a place called Sheringham High School. Um, there's a repertory theatre that, or there was a repertory theatre at the Little Theatre in Sheringham, and they'd have their professional actors come in and do kind of like masterclasses or or, or work with with a set of kind of youth actors for for a week or two weeks, and then then you'd put on a show. 
Um, and again, that was that was, it was just so inspiring. You were working with people who who were professionals and yeah, they were so yeah. creative and you'd just be like, oh my God, you can do like amazing accents and you can sing and you can dance and you can play the piano. And it's just like, wow, I, I want to be able to do this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, well, that that is, um, that's really interesting in terms of, you know, I'm, I'm in some ways, it's like, I wondered if the extracurricular stuff outside of school kind of put it in the realm of, oh, this is something that happens apart from my kind of like education. But it seems that actually it kind of helped push you and give you more focus in terms of that's where you wanted your future to go. Yeah. Well, so so what, what what's I think perhaps was, was interesting about the Norfolk Youth Music Theatre thing in comparison with the Bridge Theatre repertory thing was that there, there was a bit of a disconnect between the students and the teachers. It was like, you're professional actors and you're still kind of students. Whereas I was working with people in the, the Norfolk Youth Music Theatre who were all of my age and who were all incredibly talented. Yeah. And, and it was like, oh, <laughs> not, 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 not exactly to kind of blow my own trumpet too much, but I was like, oh, oh, I'm kind of talented too. That's yeah. quite nice. That's quite like I can kind of hold my own um, with with people in this county, and this is this seems to be an, uh, an incredibly talented county. And I'm not I'm not being acted off the stage. I'm not being sung off the stage. It's like oh yeah. cool. I'm I'm part of this ensemble, and that I think that was it. That kind of really I was like oh great yes maybe the, maybe this is something we can do. So um before we move on to what you what you've done and your career. Um, can we just talk a bit about your time at ARU? We were just having a chat, weren't we, before the session? And actually, you know, there were some good opportunities for you there at ARU, in, in, including a sort of life-changing one. <laughs> so so the, the first thing, the first thing that really happened when I when I arrived at Angular Ruskin, I was like, okay, I've moved into my halls, let's find the drama society. So I found the director of the Drama Society and they were doing this um, slightly edgy play by a playwright called Flip Ridley called The Fastest Clock in the Universe. And I won't go too far into it because I think there are things that maybe not... Suitable for a younger audience, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it was a wonderfully uh, bizarre play to be in. And again, this... I, I, I'm sure lots of people auditioned for it, but I, I managed to get the part and I was very lucky get, to get the part. And it absolutely changed my my world because I was working with a, a second year director who was great, who obviously kind of knew what he was doing. And then the, the rest of us were, were all kind of like first years and we're all kind of really excited. And and it was just it was just like a really lovely, buzzy feeling to be part of this like drama society, to be to be just putting on a, a really good piece of drama as well. It was it was very, very different from from the world of the Norfolk Youth Music Theatre, because it's like all musicals and all jolly to be going yeah. and doing this gritty play. Um, and so so. And, and it was always in the forefront of my mind that, that the drama society and, and the drama, uh, the course, um, I, I wanted to be as involved as I could be as an actor, but also as, um, as, as a producer, as a director. So in my time here, I also produced um, a couple of shows at the Mumford Theatre, also acted a whole load at the Covent Garden Drama Centre, mm -hmm. doing doing kind of versions of Samuel Beckett's plays. I also, I also my my dissertation in the end, um, and I, I'm not exactly sure what the rules are now, but back then I was able to do a performance um, as part of my dissertation. Um, and so I did, um, my, my dissertation was on um, language and power in contemporary performance. And so, so I, I did two extracts of um, two David Mamet plays. So we did uh, Oleana and Duck Variations. And so I, I, I tried to take as many opportunities to, to act and create 
um, both externally and um, during in, in the in the course itself in the drama and film studies course um, as I could and and as you mentioned earlier yeah me me and, me and my um, actual partner met doing doing a play. Uh, in Cambridge at the Junction Theatre, we were doing a um, a version of Terry Pratchett's Weird Sisters. That was uh, <clears throat> well, actually, I I actually I started off being the publicity officer on it, and then I ended up acting in it, and from <laughs> and, and from from that seed, uh, uh, our relationship has blossomed, and oh. we actually we actually so we actually ended up watching. Um, my 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 partner's uh, parents recorded right. the, the play, and we ended up watching it a couple of weeks back, and we were like, "Oh my word!" Oh. Well, we yeah, <laughs> that's brilliant. But I mean, there are lots of opportunities, aren't there, in Cambridge? For I mean, were you part of Footlights, or so I know there are kind of formal and informal relationships across the universities as well. Yeah, yeah. So what, what what's really great about studying um, at, at Anglia Ruskin and, and Cambridge and in, in Cambridge is that, as you said, there, there is kind of an informal arrangement that allows actors uh, or people actually in all societies and, and some sports clubs as well um, to, to integrate. And so I was able to perform in quite a few um, Cambridge University Drama Society plays. They ended up going up to Edinburgh a couple of times with a couple of musicals. We did one that was called Bat Boy the Musical, which sounds as batty as it sounds. Um, <laughs> ended up performing at the, the Cambridge Arts Theatre in Oklahoma. Um, I wasn't part of Footlights. Uh, Although I like to think that I'm quite funny, uh, the Footlights people they didn't think I was funny. I'm not. I'm not sure why. Um, and yeah, so it is great. Like it's and it's and it's not. It's not just as as far as I'm aware. It's not just um, drama. In fact, so I, I also have a, a background in in ultimate frisbee. So um, I've seen your CV. There's all sorts of impressive things yeah, on there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, so one of the great things about uh, Cambridge University is that the 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 umbrella um, uh, ultimate frisbee group for Cambridge. Um, it, it's not it's not just Cambridge University. It's not just Anglia Ruskin. It, yeah. it there's there's a real negotiation and a real kind of communication between the two to to kind of get better. Yeah, great. Um, OK, so um, tell us about what your journey was like, you know, um, after leaving university, what you've done, what sort of things you've been in. If you could share a little bit about your kind of career history, that'd be brilliant. Sure, sure. Well, so um, after after uh, leaving Anglia Ruskin, I, I auditioned for uh, a couple of drama schools. And so there there seems to be an idea that you have to go to drama school to be able to become a, a successful actor or to become an actor in general okay. now i would 100 percent say that, that is not the case um some people some, some of the some of the best actors i have ever met and some of the most successful actors i have ever met have have not been to to, to drama school um but a lot of people have and so I felt that at the time that going to drama school would be the thing that would would help me personally. Um, so I applied for a lot of drama schools and I found myself being unsuccessful. And so I I had to I had to work because people have to work and make money. And one of the, one of the great thing, one of the many good things about doing a, a creative degree is that you learn lots of different skills yeah. and, and, and it's and it's also and also kind of going to university as well like you 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 have to socialize you have to communicate with a whole ton of different people um, with different statuses like you're, you're always going to be talking to your peers but you're also going to pe be talking to people in power and so even even when I did the publicity um, for Weird Sisters, it was all about talking to the director of the show, but also talking to the publicity person at the venue, which was the junction, just to kind of make sure that everything was right. So it it allowed me to get a whole host of skills 
that then allowed me to uh, apply for um, for jobs. So I ended up working at um, a place called uh, Merlin. It's now called Merlin Magic Makers, which is where they make the Madame to Swords models. Oh, yeah. So so I spent I spent um, two and a half years working in in this place that you like famous people would just like be built. It was very yeah. very like. You'd, you'd see like Lady Gaga and Beyonce. Beyonce would be downstairs, not the real one, like the one made of wax. Um, and it was just, it, it was it was a wonderfully kind of creative Yeah, I can see that. To be. It's sort, of, sort of similar to acting, but sort of not, if you know what I mean, given that, you know, they're not real people. But yeah. I can kind of see how that would have worked and how that would have been kind of stimulating and yeah. a great environment to be in. But that was it. That was it. Kind of, I, I had, I, I feel as though I had lots of options in terms of where I could work, be, because of the, the 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 amount of cross cross skills that I have been given at university. Yeah. It's like, well, I have I have this. I've got technological skills. I've got communication skills. Actually, yeah. I could do a lot. But there was something in my heart that still said I I needed to be in a creative environment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So. So worked for a bit, knew, knew that I still wanted to perhaps go to drama school, um, worked worked to be able to afford to go to drama school because drama school is yeah. stupidly expensive. Yeah. Um, so went to, uh, kept, kept on auditioning this whole time. So like mm-hmm. if, if, if I had been able to get to drama school in, in a particular year, then I, I would have, but it was, it was this, it was the 2010 intake that, that finally, did it for me, and I, I 100% believe that that was the right thing to do. Um, and so I had offers from uh, three through drama schools, and the one that really got me excited was a place called Mountain View, which used to be up in Wood Green, but is now down in Peckham. Okay, so just to, just to clarify, so when you said that the right thing to do, you think it was the right thing for you to have that bit of a gap work you know sort of gain those kind of like life skills and also carry on auditioning so you're getting audition practice and do you think that combination was the catalyst for getting you into drama school 100 percent, 100 percent. so what what was what was really interesting was that the so so i graduated from anglia ruskin in 2007 and in 2007 i had um an audition for uh, a very prestigious drama school called guildhall Guildhall uh, School of Music and Drama and uh, I got through the first round and I had a recall and so only uh, maybe a hundred or so people get through to the recall stage and then they they pick 24 to, to form a company yeah, yeah. And so I was like oh this is great this is great I've got I've got I've got a chance yeah um and it didn't happen for me and it didn't happen for me I and I look back I look back on that and I think you know what I wasn't I was not ready for that Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, it it would have been it would have been too much. I think. I I think in the years in the three years that that I had out and working, and then again kind of like communicating and and finding out perhaps a bit more about who I was. Mm-hmm. It allowed it allowed me to kind of like focus in focus in on what it what it, what it exactly was that I did want to do. And by yeah. that time, I'd gone. You know what? I like I like working here. I like working with creative people. But in my heart, I I I need I need to try to be to become an actor. It's really interesting because I have heard like stories in the media about drama schools and actually them being quite brutal. And it's kind of like actually in some ways, had you got through, and had you not being sufficiently resilient that could have been the end of your career potentially but actually you really knew and you had that bit of time and you really knew that it was what you wanted to do so that must give you that kind of drive and that resilience to kind of take it forward Mm, 100% 100% kind of I, I I look back and for this for some people it completely works but it would have been um six years of of higher education um so it would have been it would have been three years of of Anglia Ruskin and then another three year uh, bachelor's and I think 
it would have it would have been really tough and and i as as a person and as as an actor i i definitely think that things have worked out incredibly well kind of for for for, for my own kind of well-being and my own mental health as well and yeah. i think even for my success as well it, you you the, the the way that you think about things changes a little bit once you've had that time to to work and to to yeah communicate and socialize with people it's it, it, it's different than just going straight into another three-year drama school yeah okay so t- tell us about your drama school experience then and um... um, so so absolutely wonderful absolutely wonderful it was really intense it was it was so different um to anything that i've ever really experienced before it was it was nine to five every day for a whole year uh extracurricular singing um doing plays going seeing shows it was so intense it was so intense um and kind of came out with it with it with a master's uh, a master's in acting and then i was like well i don't i don't i don't know what's going to happen i managed to get myself an agent which again isn't crucial but certainly helps helps you with your career um, so how did you get how did you get an agent? Did you approach someone, or did they approach you? How does that whole process work? Yeah, well, so so that that happens in lots of different ways, and can happen uh, in both the ways that you said. So what happened with me was that at the end of each uh, drama training stint, whether it's a, a three year or a, or a one year, you'll have a showcase. And that showcase was at the uh, the Criterion Theatre in London. And so you'll have uh, agents, you'll have casting directors, you'll have directors come and come and watch you do um, a two to three minute duologue. And from mm-hmm. that, they have to decide kind of your whole career. Ah, uh, yeah. whether, whether A, kind of like you're a good enough actor, B, whether kind of like your face is sellable, because that is such yeah. a massive part of the whole industry as well. Because mm-hmm. you could be the, the best actor in the world, but if 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 things don't work out in other ways, then it becomes very difficult. Um, yeah. And so they 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 had seen the showcase, they seemed to like what I did. And they got in touch and they were like, yeah, we'd like to represent you. And then so I went for a meeting with them. And yeah, everyone everyone says that acting is um, a marathon rather than a sprint. And so I was very much expecting not to have a job uh, for the first like six months to a year, just because that's, that's how it is. And then I was lucky enough to get uh, an audition for a, a touring pantomime. Um, which I got, and it was Sleeping Beauty, and I was so, so excited um, about this touring pantomime. It was around uh, Lincolnshire, Lincolnshire, and it was, it was a very, very good learning experience. Like, I, 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 it's not something that I'd ever want to do again. It was, (laughs) it was really, it was really, really tough. It was really tough. Um, sometimes three shows a day dri- driving from our base just outside Lincolnshire to, to all around Lincolnshire right, yeah and there were only there were only three people in the cast and you were putting the set up doing all the electrics yeah kind of do, doing everything we, we it was just the three of us and we were playing yeah. an hour and a half show in a school and then going to another school. Wow, yeah, that sounds yeah. intense. Yeah, it was <laughs> it was so intense. But in in a, a, in the same way, it was such a good experience because it prepares you for for the rest of your career. Yeah. Okay. Um, it like I was having to take like a whole host of multivitamins in the morning just to kind of like get through the day. So like, oh, I'm <laughs> so happy. Yeah. Um, but again, again, like without without kind of Anglia Ruskin and without kind of the um the 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 technological skills learned on the on the film side and also kind of like the drama side as well but on the film side I would have found that particular 
job far more challenging because we had to plug in microphones we had to create the whole kind of soundscape and the whole sound system every time we set the thing up so the amount of transferable skills that I learned at Angley Ruskin doing drama and film studies that weren't actually necessarily associated just to drama and film studies really yeah. set me up positively and strongly to kind of do a ton of different jobs. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's what some of the messaging that um, my colleagues and I try to convey around university and, you know, what is the value of university beyond the obvious thing of getting a degree which might lead you to a particular job it's all those kind of broader skills and experience that you get that kind of build you into a better more employable human being really yeah yeah yeah. So, yeah. do you want to share i know you've got some um, images and things do you want to just yeah. share those with us and kind of talk through what you've done a little bit more sure, people so. can see you in action as, as it were so um can you still can everyone still hear me yeah, we can still great, great. I can see your slideshow now. <laughs> great. Um, so, so um, having done the, uh, the 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 touring pantomime, which which was great, but it was also a slog. Um, I again, I thought, oh well, I'll probably never work again. And so, so, so um, but I've been incredibly lucky with with the work that I've done. So th this slideshow is kind of takes you from 2011-ish up to, I think the most recent thing I've got on there is um, 2018. Um, and obviously since the pandemic, things have been a little bit weird. Um, and we can talk about that later, but also we've I've, I've got some a couple of exciting things in the pipeline. Um, which I can hopefully tell you about. There's one thing that I can't tell you about because it's so top secret, but I can tell you that it's coming out soon. Uh, right, we'll be talk yeah, about I might have to, yeah, off off camera. <laughs> yeah. Um, so so this is this is me on a good day. Um, this is my headshot. This is probably the first thing the directors and casting directors see when they look on my online profile, which is a place called uh, Spotlight. Uh, and so they'll go, oh, he looks like a nice chap. Let's let's kind of let's get him in for audition. Um, so this is something that I'm incredibly proud, proud of. This is uh, me. I'm, I'm the one if you can see, I'm the one second in from the left uh, in the lovely pale green leather trousers. Um, this is me at Shakespeare's Globe uh, in a play called The Taming of the Shrew. So in in 2012, um about so a year or so after i had graduated i got um i got a job at shakespeare's globe um and it was absolutely amazing it was the year of the olympics as well so london had a great great buzz to it and the olympic torch actually came to visit shakespeare's globe and it was just it was just such a wonderful wonderful um, summer and I, I don't know whether um, many of you watching know about Shakespeare's Globe but it's this reconstruction of Shakespeare's or one of the, the theatres that Shakespeare worked in back in uh, in the 1600s. Um, it's all made of wood so um, everything, there you go on Sarah? Yeah, I was just going to say we're actually partnering with, partnering with Shakespeare's Globe on a film project at the moment. Our film ah. students are making uh, films for the, the theatre, so yeah. Great, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. so, so it's, all, it's all made of wood and you can fit 1,400 people in there and I've, I've, never, I've never had um, a response like it. At the, end of, at the end of shows at the Globe, or certainly used to be, you'd do this, um, this little dance at the end called the Jig. And it will kind of like elevate everyone and you have 700 people standing in the pit at the globe and then 700 people kind of like all around you sitting down and it was absolutely magical kind of and it's open air it's open air as well um and it's just it's just one of the one of the great experiences of my life and i got to do it for 70 or so performances brilliant and it was just oh amazing amazing um and then the year later uh, I did a play called Blue Stockings, which was uh, by Jess Swale, and um, and that's actually set 
uh, at Cambridge University and set in Cambridge. Uh, so it was all kind of, it was all really, really interesting. Um, and again, like we had a, we had a much shorter, shorter run, but it meant I got to wear like incredibly smart clothes and I got to grow myself a moustache. And as you'll, you'll see in, uh, you'll see in future, uh, photos that I am a big fan of moustaches and getting my hair cut. So, uh, let's see what the next shot is. So this was me, um, again, quite early on in my career, um, playing the wooer in uh, The Two Noble Kinsmen, again by Shakespeare. I did quite a lot of early modern stuff early on in my career. Um, and this was at the Egg Theatre in Bath, which is a lovely theatre, quite small, generally focuses on um, children's theatre and also theatre for, for young audiences. Um, so that was great. Again, this must have been, I don't know, 2013, 2014. Um, one of my other favourite jobs was to uh, be in a production, the first ever, in fact, professional production of um, Enid Blyton's The Famous Five. So we, we were in conversation with Hachette, who were the publishers of um, all of Ian Blyton's works. And we managed to get them to allow us to do um, a production of Famous Five because it was, oh, I don't want to get, I'm, I'm going to get this wrong. It was either the 75th anniversary of the publication of Famous Five or the 100th. I think probably the 75th. I think so, yeah, too. Yeah. Um, and you were negotiating with a company you were part of? Or? Uh, uh, not, not, not me personally. Okay. Not me personally, but the 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 company, the 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 director of this show was in conversations with Hachette, and um, so what we actually did was we created uh, a show uh, based on the first three famous five books. So there was there was never there was never a script. A script hadn't been written. Yeah. Before we before we started, so we devised the whole thing, and right. we ended up we ended up doing uh, doing a, a little bit of a tour of this show, and it went down incredibly well. And it was one of the most fun shows I've ever done because I mean the, it it was full of joy, and I, I got to wear this incredible red <laughs> red and white stripy jumper and just eat mint humbugs for about. Yeah, and ginger beer, drink ginger beer, and yeah. yeah ginger beer, yeah, oh, it was absolutely us? joyous. Are you here to tell us which member of the Famous Five you were? Uh, I was Dick. Ah. I was Dick. I've always um, wanted to be in the Famous Five. Oh it's, oh, it's just, it was so, so wonderful. And and so this this job actually led on to um, another quick job, which was to work with uh, Great Western Railways. Because they they'd been using um, the famous five characters as part of uh, advertising to get people out west, and so we, as uh, the famous five company, travelled on trains for a whole day, just kind of giving out books and and kind of generally entertaining children and and being naughty and again eating humbugs. Uh, and then so this this. I can't tell you what this is for, uh, but I can show you a uh, before and after. Um, so intriguing. Yeah. So, so th this might, I mean, my hair is kind of like similarly uh, long now, um, but they were like, we, we need you, we need to cut your hair and we also need you to dye it. So this was around this time last year, actually. Uh, and so, so ha haircuts and, and facial hair, a big, a big part of an actor's life because you, you yeah. just have to change it all the time. Um, so then I ended up having that. That was you can't really see it, but it's a good a good couple of shades more blonde. Yeah, yeah, you can see the colour difference. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, uh, and then so this this is also me on the set of uh, the Royals, which uh, which I filmed in 2017, which had Liz Hurley playing uh, the queen uh, in, a, in a dystopian future, I'm sure, uh, where Liz Hurley is the queen. 
Um, so I played a reporter and this was my first ever TV role. And it was it was just uh, just insane. People the people say that it's very different to theatre and it is. And I got picked up uh, in a car and I think it was a Jaguar. It was something posh at six o'clock in the morning to be taken to my trailer. And I had my own trailer and someone brought me breakfast and I had my own seat. Um, and it was like, it was just a little bit crazy. The amount of people that work on film sets as well. Yeah. I don't know if you can see the, the, the police car and the, the ambulance in the background, they will be props. So people okay. will have to have bought those in and oh, it, it's just be, being being on a TV set or a film set makes you realise how how vital kind of communication is and uh, how yeah kind of again how how useful interpersonal yeah. skills are because it, it's like herding cats sometimes. Yeah. I think. yeah. Um, and so um, in 2018, I had my first ever. Um, West End credit, which again, uh, I've, I've since leaving Cambridge, uh, since leaving Andrew Ruskin, the amount of times I've come back to to Cambridge, the city, to do to do plays I, is kind of innumerable. And so this play uh, is a play called Pressure, written by uh, an author called David Haig, and we had our first our first ever performances of this play were at the Cambridge Arts Theatre. Um, and then this play went on a tour around the rest of the, the UK, including Edinburgh and also, where else did it go? Uh, Guildford, Canterbury. Um, and then, then we got news that it was, it was going to go into the West End. So it was my first ever West End credit. And it was just, again, it was just joyous. Like, we were a couple of minutes away from the the ivy so every every so often we'd pop into the ivy after after the show and have one of their famous uh, cottage pies and uh, it was just it was just brilliant and the, the show was was really wonderful it's due to go to toronto it was supposed to go to toronto at the beginning of 2020 but the pandemic paid to that Mm -hmm. um, and it was even supposed to be going to um, Toronto from the 15th of March this year uh, until they postponed it by another year about five to six weeks ago. Right, OK. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, can, I, I, can, I suppose I can tell you now, uh, I, I was quite upset about that. That was quite upsetting. Yeah. But uh, I've just been cast in... Uh, uh, a TV show, which again I, I can't I can't say too much. I've signed too many non-disclosure agreements. But um, do, do you know what? Even if you could tell us, I quite like the fact that you're saying that you can't. It makes it even more exciting. So <laughs> yeah, I'll pop I'll pop up on the screen, and you'll be like, "Oh my God, him! There he is!" <laughs> <It's Robert."> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and that that actually that actually films um, on what would have been the first day of rehearsals. Well, there you go. It's a nice, it's a nice little uh, kind of like. Well, you can't have this now, yeah. but here's this. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is me with a massive moustache. Uh, yes. I did. I did a play. I did a musical in Swansea uh, at the end of 2019, uh, and unfortunately, that is not my real moustache. Uh, my moustaches <laughs> are are pretty terrible. Uh, but but I thought I should just show you that just so so you can see my love of facial hair. Yeah. Uh, and then then that's also me being hit by a fish. Brilliant. Uh, that that uh, was taken during a rehearsed reading in. I don't I don't know whether it was Middle Temple Hall or Gray's Inn, but there are quite a I think there are four there are four inns of court which are places where lawyers would study to become lawyers mm -hmm. back back from very old times I think like 1400s or so but this this particular uh, place I think is 
from the 1540s. It, it, the, the, re the reason why we performed there was because it was a, a Shakespeare's Globe um, rehearsed reading, and it, I think it predated Shakespeare's Globe and is still standing, so it's full of full of history. Uh, and and again, and this this last one is just what it's like to be on a film set. Really, you have all these people kind of congregated around the people who are acting, and then there's just me kind of like sitting there on my own. And I just thought it was an artistic shot, you know. Yes, no, it is. It's a good shot. But... <laughs> But there you go. That's that's kind of uh, a brief a brief breakdown of um, some photos of mine. Well, thank you so much for sharing those, and um, it's really interesting to um, hear those kind of like key moments like in your career. If you had to say one of them was the moment where you just went yes, which would it be? You know, you mentioned the Globe film. Which which moment? Yeah, I think I think the the first the first time coming out, um, having done the jig at the Globe, uh, and having one thousand four hundred people, uh, seven hundred of them kind of standing up applauding, and then another seven hundred kind of a around you, just kind of going a bit mad for you. I was yeah. just like, I, I'm I just don't know. I'm gonna get over this. Really, it was yeah. just so nice. so magical that the, the the, the stars were out you could you could see you could see the sky it was just I, I was absolutely spoiled kind of in, in that job because of those things yeah brilliant I mean it does sound like an amazing amazing space so um do you think feels that like there are you know most people have to compromise at some point in their working life are there things that you feel that you have had to compromise on or might need to compromise on are there things that like you wouldn't ever do? You'd be like, no, OK, I'm not going to be on a reality TV show or not that you would be as an actor. That wouldn't make any sense. Yeah. But do you know what I mean? There are things that you'd be like, no, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, well, so so it's really acting. Acting as a career is incredibly tough when it's not working when it when it doesn't work out like you you're at the mercy of of trends and fashions mm -hmm. and also how potent sometimes how how good your agent is how well connected they are to to the industry and you you have a set of, of agents who are very high powered who, who whose clients include the big names in film and tv and and they they sometimes get the first pick of the jobs yeah. so i've spent i spent a whole host of time not not doing acting work and so i've had to kind of diversify my skills i've had to work out what it is that i can do to earn money to be able um to be able to kind of survive but that also kind of doesn't drive me mad because yeah. there, there are a whole host of jobs out there that that I go, oh, I couldn't do that. Even, even yeah. though, even though they they wouldn't be particularly hard, I I I feel I feel as though I need to be kind of stimulated in a way, or or at least I kind of need to be able to survive. So so in in my time, um, I've worked in a gin shop. I have done dog a gin, a gin yeah. shop. Gin shop, yeah. Yeah, that sounds very yeah. stimulating. Yeah, a gin shop. Uh, I've done dog walking. Um, yeah. I did a whole host of dog walking. Uh, I used to do show reels, um, edit them and shoot them. Currently now, I'm actually working quite a lot at my old drama school. Uh, okay. I'm doing a lot of um, technical technical support. Again, again. So this is this is uh, a job that would would not be in my wheelhouse had it not been for Anglia Ruskin, had it not been for the the skills that I learned doing the the on the film side, um yeah. I, I wouldn't be able to be doing what I'm doing. So I'm I'm working in the the radio department um doing their tech te technician things and then also working in the film and TV department as well doing vision mixing and also camera work and and kind of helping out. And so so, are there, I mean, 
there, there are certainly things that that I I wouldn't want to do, but I've I've been lucky, yeah, I've been lucky enough to to have learnt the skills, yeah, kind of in my education to 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 kind of do lots of different things yeah. as and when I need to. You know, um, and interestingly, I, I I meet more and more creative people and people who have jobs in the creative industries, and they do have what we call a portfolio career. You know, they they are, you know, are, are, are multi-talented, have lots of different projects ongoing. And, you know, some people will like create their own music videos, but then they'll, you know, work as a kind of technical officer, even at ARU and, you know, do various different things. And and actually, you know, there are benefits across those different things. And, you know, again, it all adds up to, you know, a well-rounded and kind of fulfilling career. I've, I've certainly never met one creative who said, like, they really hate their job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, never, that never happens so yeah. and I think this is I think you also never really know who who you're going to meet and you, you never you yeah. never know and, and it might be that I think the I in my time at the gym shop I've managed to meet two or three kind of directors and well, there you go yeah like, okay you know and you never know and like it's all it's all about kind of making sometimes surprising people is great and they're like oh great oh you're an actor are you okay well we should have a chat and I'm like yeah great Cast but me that's it. because but that's also something to do with like you know your personality and the confidence that you've cultivated because you might not have those conversations or you know you might be feeling sorry for yourself that you're not currently you know working on an acting job but actually just by putting yourself out there and being confident you know uh, and again that's kind of like a difficult skill for people to gain you know um we're kind of coming towards the end which is a shame I've really enjoyed chatting to you so I'm just going to reach out to the people watching and say like if you do have any questions um, please do pop them in the chat and I can read them out to Rob. Um, if you had one piece of advice um, to young people you know who are thinking about you know acting as a career what what would that piece of advice be? Um, that's a really good question. I would say I would say it's important to. I, actually, I, I heard this. I heard this um, a couple of days ago. I think I saw it on Twitter actually. Uh, and I thought actually that's a really good piece of advice. That that it's not it's not now. Sorry, no. It's it's not it's not no. Say if you go to an audition, it's not no. It's it's not now. Yeah. And that 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 that. that that it is that it is kind of a marathon and a, a rather yeah. than a sprint, and I'm sorry that that's two points, but I feel as though yeah, it's, it's like one, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, it just just ju just because you don't succeed once in one particular circumstance, that doesn't mean that you're a bad actor or kind yeah. of or anything. You you just have no idea what people are looking for. Yeah. Great. Right. Um, and we've got a, a question here from, um, I don't know if it's Saria or Saria, so apologies, but um, they'd like to know, do you have any advice for auditioning for drama school? Ooh, um, so I would say work out, if, 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 if you can, go, go to open days, try, try and work out what kind of vibe the drama school has. Uh, I think it's the same as, as universities as well. Like I certainly went to three or four different drama schools and I was, again, I'm very fortunate in the, the one that I actually ended up going to was the one that felt the yeah. most right to me even before I had auditioned there. Um, otherwise, yeah, just just keep 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 playing, keep playing with with theatre, keep playing with scripts. Read, read out loud with your friends act acting is is mostly about kind of getting your voice out there and kind of getting keeping your your body kind of like kind of doing things and being creative and so yeah yeah just kind of have fun and be playful that would be I think that connects with what you were saying before as well though Rob because I think it's the sort of same as, as with job interviews you know, it is a two way thing. And I think it's important to remember that, you know, as well as you not being right for them, they might not be right for you. So I think in terms of like doing your research and, and the one that is right will probably be the one that is right for, for them and you. So yeah, 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 100%, 100%. Yeah. And, and, and just keep on going like Rob did. I mean, you, 
you know weren't successful in your first drama school interview were you but then you were subsequently successful and, and here you are now I'm really excited about what's coming next so I definitely want to find out about that so um, uh, hopefully we can um, hook up on social media and we can follow your story and kind of push it out a little bit so people can keep track of what you're doing but um, if there are any final questions we've got about one minute left Otherwise, I think we'll start wrapping up. But um, yeah, thank you, Rob. That was really interesting. Really nice to hear about your your story and uh, all the things that you've done. Um, I really love seeing the photos, actually. I think that worked really well just to kind of see the different types of things and, and also sort of seeing the kind of different types of acting that you've done, the different things that you've been in and the different characters that you've been as well. So that's really good. So um, thank you for joining us today, everybody. Um, I will just... I keep getting to do this as well um pop a link to feedback in the chat if you wouldn't mind completing that for us because that does enable us to carry on doing these sessions moving forward um so if you find it useful we would really like to know um, and also we do have some more sessions tomorrow and later in the week we've got george talking about film we've got one of our heads of schools talking about creative careers more generally uh, we've got emily talking about computer games on friday so do have a look at the other sessions we've got and book on to any of those if they're of interest to you. So, yeah, thank you very much for joining. Rob, if you just hold on, I'll just say goodbye to you when the others have left the meeting. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Thank you.